it one time, that's it. Sped it up, slide it in. So that is not, you know, what we call a structured musician that was a mechanical genius uh, accountant. Uh, mm -hmm. He did. They slowed the tape down. He did something interesting. It worked. And they put it in at the end again. So that just shows you all the possibilities that there are. And uh, that that was what's cool to me. That whole DVD set, Jeff Emmerich talking about, actually, somebody with an English accent reading his script, his book. But all the possibilities that there are, that you can do things, that's not scripted. Mm -hmm. You just do things. You be creative, and then you'll see what these things come out. And you had no idea that they were going to come out. Um, yeah, and that day in the life when the when the there's a bell that goes out, alarm goes off. Mm -hmm. That wasn't supposed to be in there. Hmm. That was Mal Evans, who actually I know Mal. He was their road manager. He used to drive the van around in England for them when they played all those clubs all around Europe. He was their guy that took care of them and did all stuff. And uh, he set that up to end some kind of part of the session, and they couldn't cut it out. <laughs> and they, they, he said, so it was just at the end of that take. And this is the album where they were putting things together. And then Paul's next song that they eventually slid in there was called Wake Up, Get Out of Bed. And uh, the alarm went perfect, but it was just a complete mistake or happenstance. Uh, so anyway, that just, again, opens my eyes like, hey, anything is possible. Well, especially, and I'm always the guy to bring up this kind of stuff, but especially now that everything is, you can record things digitally so easy, you get inspired for a song, you can just pick up an instrument pick up a microphone, plug it into a computer, take it down. It might not be in a polished form, but you can remember it for later. And any time you get inspiration, now you can put it to recordable media so you don't lose that inspiration. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and what I do now, I take it a uh, not a step forward, a step less than even what you're doing now. I have my iPhone. I've got mm -hmm. just the older iPhone. Phone 5C, I think it is. I get inspired. I sing my songs right into that iPhone. All my ideas. I name them. And I come back to the studio and I play them back. And I said, okay, I get it. Okay, great. I didn't lose that. That momentary inspiration. That cool thing. Not everything is cool. You listen to it later, you go, oh, well, that was terrible. That was terrible. Oh, wow. I like that one. Mm. So uh, that, that's what I do a lot now. Well, that's interesting what you what you say because um, I was actually dating a musician a while back, and he would actually put a there's an app called your keyboard. So if he's actually at work at, or he's around somewhere, he actually has his he has his uh his keyboard app on his on his uh, phone, and he'll actually sing the melody that he's singing in his head, and then. When he gets back, he will actually produce that song right then and there. Mm -hmm. Right. That's, yeah, same kind of thing. I have something called Garage Band on my phone. I I've got it there, but I really haven't used it. I know one one friend of mine is going to do this whole album on Garage Band. Wow. But but I just do the thing. I just I'll just pound the beat out and just sing that little piece that just came to your mind, and then. Once you get the little beat of the thing, you go, okay, I know how it goes now. I got it. <laughs> and you just go fill in some of the things. Maybe the r words are wrong, not the ones you're going to end up with, but you got the idea down. And you, just like you were saying, Spider, and uh, capture that inspiration, that moment. Mm -hmm. I'm, it sounds like you probably have done the same thing I've done. Is it's The next day you go, what, what was that thing I was thinking about? How did I play that? I, <laughs> I, that was great. What was that? But now yeah, you I, I I have a tendency to to get a melody and I I play a lot of things by ear rather than have a whole lot of things written down. So if I hear a melody and I like oh I like that melody maybe I'll, I'll fiddle around with it and I might record it and if I don't get back to it within a day or so I I forget where my fingers were I forget what the notes are I mean I I know what notes are I was kind of classically trained as far as um, 
I was in a marching band and all that kind of stuff, read music, but if you wanted me to just pick out a C by ear, it's probably impossible. So um, it's just funny how you can record something and be adamant that, yeah, I'm going to make sure I get it this later, and then you find yourself kind of fumbling around trying to make sure you get the right chords <laughs> and match what you heard with what you're now trying to remember. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I got you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe a, a video on the uh, fretboard might help out. <laughs> How did I do that? Yeah, yeah I've, I've done some uh, uh, lead guitar licks before. And I go, that was great. I go, now, how did I do that? What happened? <laughs> what, what happened to that? You know, that's actually like uh, my, my first two CDs that uh, you guys have a couple songs of those. Um, those albums, I did them under the name Rock Dog. And I, I said, well, you know what? Nobody wants to know about one guy doing these things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make up four guys that are in the band. That'd be kind of cool. Okay, great. And so, I, so I said, okay, the lead singer, his name is going to be Joe Island. And let's see. Hmm, where's he from? He's from Malibu. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, everybody knows Malibu. I'm about uh, 20 miles from Malibu here. Oh, I'm in Redondo Beach. I'm uh, about, about 10 miles south of the L.A. airport. So um, it's not too far. But anyway, so I made up all these characters. The, then the, uh, the rhythm player, he's from Hermosa Beach, Beach City. He made him a beach bum. His name was Justin Case. <laughs> Justin Case, right? So these yeah. guys are all on... <laughs> All on the album credits. Then the bass player said, okay, we need somebody different here. Oh, we got to have an English guy. You got to have somebody from England in there, and that's pretty cool. So his name is Evan Chuli, eventually. <laughs> <laughs> is Evan. So uh, I, I went for that. And then the, the drummer, I went kind of weird on that one. I made his name Anna Mia. Now, Anna means me in Arabic, and Mia, I think, has something to do with me in Italian. <laughs> so I did take it from Hawaii. So I made it from Hawaii. So I created these four fictitious people that were my people. And I dressed myself up in different ways. I took pictures of myself and with earrings and things like this, and that was my band. But uh, how I advertised the group is as a, a jam band, not with a preconceived product so just like I mentioned that lead guitar like I might have done I said I didn't even know how I did that and that's what you'll hear on that those albums are guitar things that I did only one time I didn't go over and over it I just jammed to it I got in the mood I got in the character just like a film I got into the character of the thing and I was like a Hollywood band with these four guys you know I'm not far from Sunset Boulevard so I've been to all those places, the Whiskey and Viper Room, all those places. And I just put myself into the character, and I made those songs. Hmm. I, I used to go out in the evenings to uh, just hang out at different music spots and just hang out with the people, and I would jot down things that people said. And those would become the lyrics for those songs. Uh, I was at a down in Hermosa Beach, actually, at some place near the Lighthouse, famous jazz club there, but the rock place right next door. And the waitress came up. I was at the bar, and she said, oh, I only got three hours of sleep last night, and that was with the neighbor. I go, oh, hey, that's pretty good. I wrote that down <laughs> on a nap. That became uh, the, the opening lyrics for one of my songs. Uh, I only slept three hours last night, and that was with the neighbor. So... <laughs> So I just took those things, I played things, sang things just one time through. Tried to get that really, a little flowing rock sound to it. So you know, that was that was kind of a concept uh, album. And I followed it up with another one. The first one was called Rock with an Attitude. And the second one is called We Only Came to Rock. <laughs> so so th those are pretty fun to me. And I, had, I actually did a lot of promotion on that. I was on... Uh, I got the records into Tower Records Hollywood, which wasn't an easy fate uh, or thing to do. 
But I went up there, and of course, I wasn't any one of those four characters I just mentioned. I was just Johnny Reed, the producer, or manager. And I went in, I met with a general manager at Tower Records, and uh, went back to his office, and, you know, I had posters and the albums, which were CDs, actually. And, uh, you know, pitched to him about this whole thing, and I actually had an advertising campaign going on KLOS Radio here in Los Angeles, which was one of the major rock stations. I had a whole set of advertisements going up there, I had a whole set of advertisements going up on Sirius Satellite Radio. And anyway, the end of that meeting was, the guy said, you know what, Johnny, uh, we don't let a lot of people in like this, but you're going in, okay? You're going to be in the store, we're going to give away your posters, we're going to do the whole promotion on you, and everything like that, so that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Yeah, you're telling me on the email that you um, got to work with uh, two towers, but, not two towers, but tower records, but... Mm-hmm. We'll come back to that. Com- we'll come back with that conversation. So I gotta do sp- tall. Uh, pr- tall uh, God, Lord, I had sponsor water. break. Sponsor break. Sponsor break. Gotta take a break. I swear <laughs> to you, I can't talk. And we got a um, question in the chat room with Marjorie. So we'll come back to that too. So hold that thought. Tower Records. Question from Marjorie is going to be next. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to play one of your songs called About You so real quickly tell us about that song okay about you mm-hmm. okay. let me think about that for a second <laughs> and there's two versions of that song so you're playing the one that uh, not the there's one unplugged version but about you, you is uh, yeah, it's full of harmony so that's why I did two versions of it mm-hmm. I have to think about what that song's about I guess oh. it's about you all right, it's about you. All right, here you guys go. <laughs> it's about you, Johnny Reed. You always lifted me up. You never let me down. You keep turning my head around. So my feet don't touch the ground. That's the way it should be. Someone knew what did they say? Because you changed the way you feel, and what we have is real to you. Because you changed the way you feel about me, about me, about me. New ideas are running.
Want to know how you can help Let's Talk About the Music stay on the air and earn some VIP privileges at the same time? Go to patreon.com slash LTATMradio.